Hey, this is Lester Martin, and I'm going to take a few minutes and try to just visualize in as simple as way as possible this notion of sorting. And I'm talking about data lakes. I'm really talking about in table formats like iceberg and delta lake. This notion of uh, total order sorting or just sorting by versus a very cool feature called Z ordering that has a pretty useful feature set as well. So let's just build a, a sample logical table here. Uh, imagine we had a table that has at least field one and field two, and it could have other columns, uh, but we'll just keep it simple and visualize that. And let's just go ahead in our mind, logically kind of sort this thing by field one, field two, and each one of the fields has values A through H. So pretty straightforward, you look across the first row, a, A through A, H, B's, the C's, the D's. Pretty, pretty normal looking stuff, I hope, there. So what we're going to do is, let's assume we want to build a very small data set, obviously, but let's build 16 files out of that in the classical sort order. So do, really, we just need to persist what you see on the screen. And if we're going to do 16 files, you know, we do the math here, it ends up we have about four records per file. So we're just going to walk this. Those first four records get created as a file. We'll grab those next four records, mint uh, a second file. Um, guess what? We've got another file, yet another file, and so on and so on and so on until we have our 16 files built. Now that we have them, let's uh, see what would happen if we um, uh, sorted by field one and field two and we did an OR condition. Let's look for uh, uh, records that have field one equal to E or field two equals to C. Well, the field ones are pretty straightforward. You know, we're talking about the fact that these files all have metadata about mins and maxes for each one of the columns. So field one, field two all has mins and maxes. And with that, we can make a quick determination that, hey, the rest of those files won't contain an E in field one. But if we think about field two values and we look at the mins and maxes the way it's laid out, we all of a sudden have a little bit of a problem. We're gonna end up having to have a uh, look about, in this case, about half of the records or half the records exactly in this specific case. Why? Because all of these have a min and a max for field two of A through D. We're looking for C and then we're excluding the others because they have E through H and we know they would be there. So if you put that all together and we're trying to prevent looking at files that we don't have to, we have to, in this scenario at least, say, hey, I gotta look at nine of those 16 files. So we're gonna go scan those files. And when we rip through them and uh, read through them, we're looking for what we're looking for, we end up finding out, yep, we did find the records we're looking for. You see those in, in green here, but we did end up having about 21 false positives. Again, very small data set, just trying to show you an example. So, okay, that probably sounds reasonable considering what we've talked about in that classic kind of order, total order sorted model from left to right and so on. Kept it simple with two dimensions. Let's do that same scenario, but this time let's use this concept called Z ordering. And again, I'm trying to very simplify this with a the visualization. There's a lot more math to this, but at heart, let's just kind of get started and see what we can create. So we're gonna start kind of upper left quadrant like we did before, and we'll just move along here. And what you might notice as I'm moving along here, um, the order I'm doing here is a little different. Before it was AA and then AB, but this time it's, uh, I'm putting kind of the field two, field one order, if you notice that. So AA and then BA in that second column. And I said, I'm a zig back down a row. Hmm, what's that all about? Okay, well, I'm gonna do it. There's an AB. And why did I do that? I wanted to complete one of those Zs, Z ordering. I'm building, as you see here, a Z, okay? So guess what? That's four fields, excuse me, four uh, uh, records. We're doing about four records per file. Let's mint our first file. Then I'm gonna start another small Z. All right, bear with me, C and A. Remember, I'm gonna put it more of that field two, field one order here. I'm gonna slide over, I'm trying to kinda 
do that same kind of uh, uh, definition there, what's in there, but I'm kind of building, believe it or not, another one of those Z's. So I'm going to zig back again and complete the second Z. Got a Z and then a Z. So I'm sliding over. That's the second file. Yep. And then I'm going to zig way back down. <laughs> oh my goodness. Zig way back down for another file. All right. Field two, uh, A, field one, C, A, C. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to use that same kind of zig, zag, kind of Z pattern and use that same uh, field two, field one kind of ordering of what I'm putting in there. And what did I end up with? There you go. You know, field, uh, I'm sorry, uh, another kind of file here uh, that's uh, producing uh, Z. And that Z is, as I just said, another file. And I'm going to complete... Uh, I'm going to make another Z, so I'm just going to slide over. Another Z is another file. And if you really kind of notice what I was saying a minute ago, is I really built a bigger Z. So I'm, I'm just kind of building these Zs within Zs kind of model. And if that makes sense, which it may or may not this early, but watch it again. What am I going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to extend the top of my even bigger, my giant Z. And as my note says, just wait for it. You'll see it in a minute. It'll make a little bit of sense. Keep following that same pattern. I build another, uh, another one of the small Z's. Another, another file. Yep, another Z in a file. A seventh Z in a file. An eighth Z in a file. Okay. And then what am I going to do? Yep. Oh, just call it out. We're going to definitely. That's our second bigger Z. So another four of these Z's made a bigger Z. And then what I was waiting for was. Yeah, let's zig back for that giant Z I mentioned a minute ago. Uh, if you don't see it yet, I'm going to show it to you in just a momento. So hang in there a little bit longer. So we zig back for to kind of work on our giant Z. That creates another small Z in a file. Another two, three, and four small Zs. Uh, so there's three more Zs, three more files, four total that make up our third bigger Z. Small Zs, bigger Zs. And guess what? We're going to slide over and make a fourth, you know, bigger Z. And then hopefully you saw it. You have to look really careful is, yeah, there's that giant Z. So we are doing something a little different with Z ordering. Uh, the blog post I'm going to embed this in. Check the notes here in the YouTube video. I'll go back. We'll try to explain a little better why this might be good and why it might be bad. But ultimately, let's, uh, let's do some tests uh, with this one as well, since we did it earlier. So we got our 16 files, or just a different set of files than we had before, but let's do that same test again. Again, very small data set, uh, but let's see if we can make some improvements when we do something like this. We're not doing field one is E and field two is E. If we did that, if we had that left to right uh, searching all the time, let's not do Z ordering. Let's just do good old fashioned sorting. But if we may mix and match these or just do a the second field or do more than two fields here. Let's just look at this one. Field A, uh, field 1E or field 2C. Well, for the field one values, um, field one had to be E. Here they are. It's these four uh, files across the bottom. We need to take a look at those. Every one of those is going to definitely have a min and a max that would include um, E in it for um, the value of field one. So conversely, for field two, we have to grab these four files as well. Same reason with the metadata in these files, talking about mins and max by columns. And if you notice, what we end up what's up with is something a little different. But previously, we had like the whole, a whole half plus another little slice on the other side. Here, we end up with about seven files. So instead of uh, nine files, we're looking at seven. Again, take into account larger data, larger sizes. And obviously the problem or the solution is going to compound and get better and better. But if we go ahead and look at that a little deeper, we had 21 false positives. So these are the files that we had to look at. But in those files, what did not meet the criteria we were looking for? Smaller set of those as well. So put it on the board, kind of green light, red light, and that kind of stuff. Uh, again, consult the blog post link that's in this YouTube video to hear a little bit more of this scenario here. But in this simple scenario, it was probably easy to see how 
um, once those files were built. Maybe it wasn't perfectly easy to see it exactly how. Go back and look again, consult the blog post. If you want to do the math, do the math. But uh, think of those Zs, and we end up actually doing less work, which is ultimately what we want to do when we're talking about big data querying. Look at less data. All right, thanks. I hope it helped.